flag and we're going to salute the flag outside. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Open the meeting. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, bid results. Contract uh, 2004 01 uh, plow truck. Plus plow. I believe the board has all had copies of the results. And Champlain Peterbilt, 128,973. And a Jerry, 125,000, 125,000, uh, 976, and then there's an option for a warranty. I'm supposed to ask you a report on that, Phil. So. No, they've both exceeded our budgeted money. I believe it was $90,000 we got in our budget, so they're even the lowest bid is thirty, almost thirty-six thousand dollars over our budgeted figures for this year. What did they expect to get the old one? No idea. No idea. I don't know, Brian. Do you have any idea? Twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Well, it does have a stainless steel spread on the back, so that helps. What's the board's pleasure? Uh, we go a year with the old, another year with the old one. Another year for the old one. That's fine, but I bet you the bid will come in higher next year. So you want to put figure on more money in the budget. Mm -hmm. You got forty six thousand million budget for us. Uh, so. Any consideration of Golden State contract? See what the prices are. We can, we can check them, compare the prices. I think that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. and I think we can reject the bids. That's that's just my opinion. See what the state contract is. Right. Uh, see what the state contract is for that size truck. I think it's a sterling, but see what the prices are. I talked to the mechanic today and he told me that if, the, if they built the sterling around the specs that we spec'd out with the larger motor and the automatic transmission and the spare box that we wanted, it'd be about the same price. So. Um. We don't have the money. It's no. just no way. I'll make a motion to reject the bid. Second. Motion made by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Moore. Is there other, other discussion? Or he doesn't know. He said. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's making a difference. That's so, what did. so before we vote whether or not to reject these bids, what is our plan going to be? I'm not clear. Well, I, I think we should check the uh, state contract. And the state contract is higher than what the money we got. Then we're just going to have to wait. Is there stuff you can cut out of this, one, Brian? Or is it pretty bare as it is? Mm -hmm. For the only, you know, the old plow truck is 15 years old, and we're looking at this new truck to last 15 to 20 years. So it is a long-term truck. So it was, it was spec'd out, built it very well. I mean, it wasn't. We didn't cut any corners on it. Any other discussion? And you would recommend, Brian, staying with the specs then? Because of, of how long a life you want the truck to have? If you redo the specs, you're talking a smaller truck. I mean, for the size of the community that we have, I don't think we should go any smaller. We already cut it down from the truck that we got, haven't we? Not much. Power-wise, it's about the same motor size because uh, you need a larger motor when you go to an automatic transmission. Oh, I understand that, yeah. Well, I'd like to go another year. We can. We have to. We might have to. Not talking, another year, you're talking more money again, though. Well, 
Can we? With the truck that we have now? Yeah. You can go another year. And then take a, then we can take a closer look, you know. Well, first of all, we can roll over that 90 grand if, if the treasurer would allow us to do it. Put, yeah, that, part, right, put that 90 grand right into the truck fund. Part of it, part of it is coming from the truck fund. Yeah, we got 40 in there already, uh, I believe. And you're expecting between 10 and 12 thousand dollars for the sale of the old one. Mm -hmm. That's what we budgeted. I say we roll that over into next year, and then it won't be, we won't get hit so hard. Any other discussion? All those in favor, vote by your sign of aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, surplus bids. We. Uh we advertised for our 1979 American Trans fire truck and for a 35 foot three section ladder. Um, the bids were due Friday at 10 a.m. the 16th and we received no bids. We advertised. How about if we go to that journal? Like, I asked Phil about it this morning. He says the same trucks come up, but at least it goes out to all around the country. I, I think that's that, that's an option. There's, there's two or three of them out there. And I think another option is, is that we put it on our website. We need to work stuff and money. But any cost is going to keep it over there. Right. What about listed on eBay? Do well, I sell everything else on eBay. That could be done too. It costs money to do that. You, know, no, you, you add it on to the uh, seller's price or the buyer's price. <laughs> you motion? I think so. I got it. What do you want to do? Motion by trustee Admiral. Second. Re advertise in various Re ways. In various ways. Both items? Mm -hmm. That ladder surprises me because that ladder is brand new. That surprised me that somebody didn't pick up on that. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? All those in favor, vote by the user side of aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Open the meeting for comments in the public at this time. Anybody wishing to address the board may do so at this time. All right, close the session. I have a chance at the end of the meeting. Minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, you all have copies. Is there any additions or deletions? Moved by Trustee Hopro. Second. Second by Trustee Penfield. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor vote by Mr. Senate of Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, bills. We all have copies of the bills. Is there any addition or deletion? I'll make a motion to pay the bills. I'll second. Uh, motion by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Huckrow. Is there any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor of vote by the user side of aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried. Correspondence. We received a um, invitation from the St. Lawrence FDR Power Project, which is under the New York State Power Authority. They're having a 50 year celebration of their operating license on Tuesday, July 27th at 12 o'clock at the Robert Moses Power Dam in Messina. Uh, they're asking if anyone is going that we RSVP by July the 21st. I'm going already to call them. You've already spoken to them? Okay. Uh, the next item we have is a letter uh, from Dean Lashway. Uh, it's a dated July 15th address to the address of mayor. It was regarding Beacon, Beacon Heights North Subdivision Phase 4. Dear Mr. Rivers, in 2003, the Village of Browser's Point approved Phase 4 of the Beacon Heights North Subdivision. The developers, Rob and Todd Boyer, are looking to modify four lots in this phase of the subdivision. The approval granted in 2003 mapped lots that would have 100 feet of road frontage. 
Boyers are now proposing to modify lots 34, 36, 38, and 39. This modification includes the division line between lots 34, 36, and 38. Lot number 38 will have 115 feet of road frontage. Lots 36 and 38 will have 100 feet, and lot 39 will have 85.03 feet of road frontage. This change will still meet the Village of Browse's point zoning requirements. The remaining lots in this phase are not being modified. This sub submission requesting approval by your Village Board is intended to follow through with approvals from your board and the Clinton County Health Department. As part of the Clinton County Health Department approval, they require your board approval. Your earliest review and approval of this modification is greatly appreciated. A copy of the map showing the proposed changes is included with this letter. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to call. And I do have those drawings if anyone has reason or wants to look at them. We're all set right now. I yes. would move that we uh, approve the big heights north subdivision phase four changes. I'll second that. Moved by Trustee Hopper, seconded by Trustee Jefferson. Is there any discussion? I just said, Brian, that doesn't change anything from any other point of view, correct? Electrical, anything like that? No. Okay. They're ready to build one of the houses, I guess. Ready to, I think they have broken ground. So. Any other discussion? No other discussion. All those in favor, vote, vote by you to stand by. Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. The next letter we received was from Pat Air Assessor. It was to the Village of Browse's Point, it was Copy Town Champlain, Village of Champlain, Clinton County Real Property Office. The subject was assessment data mailers. Um, a data mailer is a, re uh, please be advised I am planning to mail out data mailers by Friday, June 9th for residential and vacant parcels in the village of Rouse's Point. A data mailer is a report on each individual parcel of property listing the items such as type of building, number of baths, fuel type, land size, and type, etc. Each property owner will receive the information about their individual property to review to determine if the data items listed on the assessment records are correct. Property owners will be asked to return the report with corrections. I will be visiting many parcels to review the data. Data mailers are a requirement of New York State Office of Real Property Services annual reassessment to be sent a minimum of every six years. I am dividing the project in two areas, residential and vacant, in the village of Rosses Point, comma, village of Champlain, comma, town of Champlain, and commercial townwide. The amount of work and time involved requires me to divide the areas to do over the next few years so that I am able to maintain the regular assessment work. I am asking for your help to reassure property owners this process is necessary and is important to them. The assessment data collected is used to determine the assessed value for each property. If the data is correct, they will receive the assessed value that reflects market value for the property and an equitable assessment compared to their neighbor's property. Unfortunately, I was spending a great amount of time working out of the office and there will not be anyone to answer the telephone or speak to them if they stop at the assessor's office. Please inform owners if they leave a message and their telephone number, I will return their call. If you have any questions, suggestions, or requests, please contact me at 298-816 extension 7. Thank you. Um, next item we received was a letter from Crystal Carter who is the director of the Clinton County Office of the Aging. Aging. It was addressed to the mayor. Dear George Rivers, I am pleased to inform you that the New York State Office of the Aging, Aging is, is sponsoring a listening tour across the state to engage in an informal conversation with local offices for the aging and other important stakeholders. The listening tour takes place approximately every two years so the agencies, director, and staff can hear from those on the local and community level who are directly involved in the issues, programs, and services related to older persons and their families. This year, the Office of the Agent, Agent is conducting 12 regional sessions in order to receive feedback on creating a point of entry system for long-term care that is easy for consumers and their caregivers to understand and use while respecting consumer choice by providing unbiased, comprehensive information and Project 2015, an effort to engage communities in planning for it and should be an aging and cultural diverse baby boom population. I expect representatives from the State Department of Health will be joining the Office of the Aging 
on the re listening tour. The two agencies have been working collaboratively on a number of projects, including long-term care reform. The session will be convened on July the 27th, 2004 at 1 p.m. at Clinton Community College. I hope you can join us in this opportunity to express ideas and concerns about a point of entry system in Project 2015 and talk about what is going on in our communities. Please let me know if you'll be able to join us by July 25th. We hope to see you then. Sincerely, Crystal Carter. Is anybody on the board interested in going to that? I'd like to go, but I can't be in the scene and here at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm working that day. Well, okay. Um, let, let me check and see, and then I'll let someone know by the time. Yeah, I'll give that. I do. Okay. Yes, thank you. But Phil, remind me, okay? I will. I'm making a note on the note on now. The next item we received was a, a letter from Warren Bissett, uh, engineer in charge from the Department of Transportation of Watertown. Mr. Bissett is our local engineer on the Route 11 and 9B project. Uh, it was addressed, Dear Property Owners, the contractor has scheduled to start milling the pavement on Route 11 slash 9B, parentheses, Lake Street, on Tuesday, July 20th at 7 a.m. from Stony Point Road, to the intersection of Route 2. To expedite the milling operations, we are requesting that all vehicles be off the roadway from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. We anticipate milling operations to last three to four days, weather permitting. Milled surfaces will be in place for two to three weeks while water valve boxes, manholes, and storm inlets are adjusted. Thank you for your patience and understanding. For any inconvenience this may cause, please feel free to call me at 297-633-4 if you have any concerns. Truly yours, Warren Seth. And that's what I have for correspondence. Thank you. Report to the Mayor of Trustees. Uh, I have one thing on the, on the agenda. I would like to present for discussion the purchase of a vehicle under the Municipal Alternate Fuel Vehicle Program. This program is sponsored by the Municipal Electric Association and New York State Power Authority. It provides for a 0% loan for the purchase of an alternate fuel vehicle. I would like you to consider the purchase of a Ford Escape hybrid four-wheel drive vehicle for coffee at $28,585. I've been informed that there will be only 30 of these particular hybrid vehicles available in New York State municipalities. Therefore, we are to attempt to attain one is essential that we put our names on the list as soon as possible. I realize this is not included in this year's budget. However, we have contacted IEEP folks, and they are willing to make, uh, it's not monthly payment, but they are willing to make the monthly, it works out, the monthly payments that we will incur under our two, on, until our 2005-2006 budget's in place. The payments from, will be made from our IEEP account. The monthly payment for this vehicle is approximately $790 and will be for a term of 36 months, three years. We hope for delivery sometime this fall if we are able to obtain one. The, school, the, the Ford Escape Hybrid is rated over 45 mile, miles per gallon of gas. Based on the volume of travel that we have experienced, I believe it would be worthwhile to invest. The vehicle could be used to travel for training courses, meetings, and, and would eliminate the need to send staff to Flashburg, pick up and return rented vehicles. It would also provide a sufficient time savings benefit. I would like to make a motion to the board to enter the loan agreement with the Power Authority of the State of New York to purchase a 2005 Ford Escape vehicle under the Municipal Alternate Vehicle Program at a cost of $28,595. And I would ask for a second of the motion at this time for discussion. To get it on the floor, I'll second it. We have a motion made and seconded. Discussion. Now, what's the purpose of this, George? This sure. is. Phil has now have to go to Albany four times a year and under this um, quality community program. Uh, we go to the Municipal Electric. Well, unfortunately, maybe nobody's going this year, but we do go in April. Uh, we have the lineman school that we send in. And what happens there, when the lineman, the two guys going right now, they take a pickup. 
an hour short of vehicle in the village. Uh, and I have been asked uh, this week to consider running for the executive board of the municipal election. And I'm, I'm seriously considering that. So there may be monthly travel to Syracuse. But now we lease a car, rent a car. We lease so a car, rent a car, or pay mileage. Which is how much usually you're going. Know, uh, it, vary, it varies, so depending on what the traveling is. Like uh, this year here, nobody went to the conference of mayors, but we would have the conference of mayors. Then we have the fall meeting, or the winter meeting of the conference of mayors that we go to. Uh, there's enough need in the village for it. And, I, and this car will be strictly for that kind of business. I don't want to see it uh, going to Prosper and picking up material and muddy boots and stuff like that. Mr. Mayor, how are we going to guarantee that we can live within limits on it? That's my only concern is that it's not going to be used just to, you know. I think I think that can be done for John. I think there should be, uh, you know, mileage uh, charts and, and whatever. Uh, uh, for, for all of us. I'll give the keys to Phil and let him. Get <laughs> he likes well, the other thing is, too, you got, you got to realize that most of the traveling, and I don't want to tell our son what to do, but most of the time will be charged against the electrical budget. <laughs> it would be. You just stop to think about it. Well, Phil's traveling for the quality community. Yeah, that would be charged. Funding. That'd be great that funding. Yeah. So, I'm unclear though as to the the IEEP role in this. What what exactly is this going to cost the village taxpayer dollars? Uh, about two year, two and a half year payment. Of seven hundred ninety dollars a month. Yeah. But that but you you got to understand when you say the taxpayers, that is split up into different funds. But that's okay. I understand that. But I guess my thinking, because I, I don't have a copy of what you just read, George. So these oh, figures are all new for me tonight. But twenty-eight thousand five hundred eighty-five dollars would go an awful long way toward getting a new snowplow truck, which we just rejected this <coughs> on because we were short money. That snowplow I mean, truck. You, you got to understand this. I understand, that's George. But no, I'm no, just, you don't. Now, a snowplow truck will come strictly out of tax dollars. I understand that. So you're going to increase the taxes. This is not. This will be split amongst all four accounts. But I guess I just see, you know, it, it, it's still going to cost the village money. Whether it's split amongst four accounts or not, it's still going to cost the village money. Correct? Sure. Yeah. So I'm just thinking priorities. And again, I haven't seen this until you just read it, so the figures are new in my head. But as I'm looking at this, is, is this a larger needed item than a new snowplow truck for the residents of the village? Which, which is, you know, even if even if you take half of that money, you get fifteen thousand of the twenty-eight five eighty-five and put it toward the new plow truck. Is that is that a better use of that money right now than this vehicle? Because we're surviving right now with the travel that we do. Yes, yeah, but it's costing us money. Yes, it is costing us money. That's it it costs us seven hundred dollars a month. No, I mean, if no, you go, that's only for three years now. And that is paid no, for. But after you're spending what, about eighteen, nineteen thousand, roughly, say, well, two check, years. I have no idea. We we check, checked into it, but it, it's getting more and more. Brian, you said we can get by with the snow truck so far for another year. Then we've got, goes up more. We've got another yeah, yes, one, just like everything else. Yeah. We've got another what three three years is it on the credit program? Yes. Another well, three years to, uh, this fall we'll go for two weeks and then three years after that. Twice a year? Uh, four times a year. Four times a year. That's four weeks out of the year I think uh, I mean if they pick up pickup, is it hurting the village that bad when they're gone? With that pickup? Yeah. And that's what I heard today. I heard it today strongly. Every time they go, we, we're hurting. But where do we have to go? We have to go from the blue building to the substation, the blue building to the office, or the blue building to Champlain Street, or Take worst case scenario, from the blue, blue building to Smith Street. Use your fire truck. <laughs> Seriously, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. Is it something that we have to vote on this evening? Yes, and it's imperative because there's only 30 vehicles coming to the state of New York. I talked to Ford directly last week. 
and the guy told me, he said, uh, and, and I had talked to Riley Ford um, well, a few months ago because I had heard them coming out and I asked them if they were, they said they're on the list and because they are a premier dealer, Riley, Riley okay. that they will possibly get one. And the supply and demand here is, uh, demand is 10 times what the supply is. The, the object of the program was the power authority has set aside $1 million to the municipal electrics to buy these vehicles at 0% loan, three years. And I don't know how long they're going to have that program. And the IEP money, to explain it a little more, they do not want to really get involved with the municipal electric and the power to it. They, they think that the IEP money, IEP think that's a good program. But seeing that we don't have any money in the budget this year, that they would they would take care of this year's payment for next year's budget. But even if you're looking, you did look at 30 months at 800, roughly $800 a month, you're talking $25,000. But once you say, okay, we'll do it, you've got to find the money next year's budget. Yeah, we we'll put it in next year's budget. budget. Yeah. And I don't see a problem to doing it in next year's budget. Except that it could be potentially $12,000 towards the new cloud truck. Which can't now go to the cloud truck if it's going to buy the hybrid gear. Yeah. I get it. I, they said it would not be $12,000. I think that if you're, if you're getting a 0% loan from the power authority, and then IEP is funding part of, part of the vehicle. I believe that whole vehicle would be funded through the electric fund, not any of the other funds. Well, I mean, that's something we have to work out next year if we get it. Which means exactly what are sent for people who are listening? That has nothing to do with snow plow at all. Um, snow plow is a general fund. So you're saying it's no cost to the village? It's no cost to the taxpayers. It's, cost it's to a rate cost payers. to the rate payers. Okay, so it's not a cost to the taxpayers, but right. it's a cost to the rate payers. Correct. Which many of whom are the same and individual. You're talking probably about 8,000 a year. For two years. No, approximately two years. Is that what? Maybe two and a half. I don't know just how, depending on when we get that vehicle, if we get it. <laughs> Do we have to show the arson in, in, in paying for it out of the electric fund that a certain amount of its use is, is devoted solely to activities based on the electric department in the village? I don't know if there's any stipulations on the, on the purchase of the vehicle. I don't know if there's any, any stipulation on the contract. No, I mean from, from your budgetary point of view. If you're paying well, for a vehicle out of the electric a, fund, a majority, what does that mean? A majority of it should be electrical business. Yeah, it probably will be. Most of these in your term are the Municipal Electric Utility Association meetings. <clears throat> How much money do you think you spend a year traveling? Do you have any idea? Not a Not a few. Thousands of probably. You know, it goes up, you know, you just, you pay 32 cents a mile or you, or you rent a vehicle. Or, or, uh, <coughs> 32 cents. And then there's, you know, then there's trips that are taken that, they're not even charged. They're not even charged, or you know, they just you just go somewhere and you fill up, fill the tank up with gas. I, I have, I have a clue. Brian, <coughs> history on these uh, new hybrids. Come up in the Minnesota electric one had one for three years now. Mm -hmm. It's been an excellent vehicle, excellent vehicle. Uh, they're driven it to all over the state. I've heard that, but I thought they didn't know if you had any. When they break down, is it expensive? Three years, it still would be under. Under warranty, I'm sure. <coughs> it's, uh, it, if you know how they work, they got two separate motors. They got an electric motor and they got a uh, gas engine. And when you're on the open road, usually you're running on a gas engine. Uh, and you're charging the batteries on the open road. When you get into, uh, into traffic, you run on the electric engine because of the stop and go. And 
Is there any other just discussion? Uh, I guess the only thing I would say is that I would, you know, I know, I know there's a there's a time crunch and there's a, there are only 30 of these, but um, if we could wait until the next meeting to vote on it, I, I would feel much better about voting for it. At this point, I can't. So I'm sorry, but I can't. Well, there's a motion made and a second, so it's got to be voted on. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, Trustee Hopper. Aye. Trustee Penfield. Well, in light of the fact that all of these figures are at least coming to my attention tonight, and without having had more time to think about it, at this point, I'm not convinced that we need it. I'm not convinced that it's a priority for the village, and I'm voting no. Trustee Jefferson. Aye. Trustee? No. And the mayor votes aye. The motion carried. Okay, that's all I think on the agenda for me, Trustee Hopper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Hopper. Trustee Penfield. The first item I have tonight is um, based on our last meeting and discussion of the schedule of zoning fees, which were put together by our code enforcement officer, based on what is um, similar to what's being done in the area around us. And I know that we wanted another couple of weeks last time to take a look at these. And um, I was wondering whether or not anyone had any comments or whether it's the desire of the board to vote on these this evening or if you feel that you need more time to look them over. Anybody heard any repercussions on any of these? Well, they're not, or in not place even yet. public. No, they're not in place yet. No. No. And they're set by, by resolution of the board, so, you know. In the similar way that the building permit fees were. So. I have one question actually, Mike, for you if you don't mind. Sure. Do you have a copy in front of you or no? No. It, let me just read it to you then and see. It's, it's under the applications to the Zoning Board of Appeals. You have lists for special use, area variance, and use variance. Right. And then the fourth item you have is the appeal from the decision of the zoning officer. Right. And then you have interpretation of the zoning law. Is that you or is that the board? That would be a decision that I rendered. And if whoever is applying doesn't agree with me, okay. they can take it to the zoning board. Okay. And that's the application fee that the zoning board would charge them to have them bring their... There are reasons of why they feel I would be wrong. Okay. And there's a lot of paperwork involved with that, as with any of those variances. That's why the fees are what they are. And regardless of the, um, the decision and the result of the appeal, that fee would remain the same? Yes. Okay. And where did you get these figures from? Actually, Mike put them together, and they're fairly consistent with what is the town done in the area. We use those in the town. Uh, Peru is very similar. Beatman Town is similar. Same prices, roughly? Roughly, yes. They have a little bit different wording for some of the different things, but I worked with uh, the attorney, uh, Mr. Tom Renain, on those. And those. But based on, the, on, on what it costs, because you have a lot of postage, and any of these, anytime you, you have a public hearing, for any zoning issue, you have to notify people within a 500-foot radius. And in the village, the houses are very close together, so if you can rack up postage and the letters. And uh, I mean, it, 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 Carol spends a lot of time on that stuff. I mean, I, I don't think the village should be giving the service away. Mike's time as well. Your time as well. Uh, so. I work cheap, though. <laughs> Phil, do we need to present these in the form of a resolution, or can we go ahead and vote on them tonight? You can vote on them this way. Okay. Make a motion to approve them. I'll, I'll move that we approve the fees as written. Second. Moved by Trustee Penfield, seconded by Trustee Hargrove. Is there any other discussion? I guess my only question would be, Phil, do we need to set a date on which these You have to go in effect the date that you want to go in, that you're going to have them effective. Mike, what do you think? September, October, whatever. I mean, it's up to you. September 1st? Okay, so my, let's include in my motion then that, that we approve these effective September 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that all right, John? Mm -hmm. okay. Any other discussion? We need a roll call vote here? Okay, all in favor, vote on your side of aye. 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 Okay, um, wait, I lost my list. Okay. The second item that I have tonight is I spoke with um, Brian Pelkey this afternoon about the sewer line, which is now complete, back to Ashwood Drive. And um, 
his crew, I think, did an excellent job. I know he mentioned Nelson, Bob Sterling, Brian Kluke, and Junior Ashline, and I don't want to leave anyone out, so if there are other people as well, um, they did a very, very good job. They did this in a very timely manner, well under what we would have figured any budget figure would have been, and certainly um, well below what it would have cost to have it done by the contractor currently in the village. So good job to those guys for getting that in a timely fashion. And the last item that I have kind of goes along with the letter that Phil read about the milling on Lake Street. I've had um, some residents approach me, especially walkers, I guess, in the village and people who frequently ride their bikes on the sidewalks, just to offer as a reminder to people who are watching that as, as the work begins on Lake Street, there may be even more use of the sidewalk by both walkers and bike riders and so on. And just to be considerate that we all do share that, that area. And if you're on a bicycle and you're coming up upon someone, just to let them know that you want to go by in some way. I know it's it can be a little bit awkward to say something to someone, but I think that, that if there is an increased use, that it would be a very good thing to do just to be considerate to all of us who use the sidewalks. So that's all I have. Thank you, Trustee Penfield. Trustee Jefferson. Okay, <coughs> these have a couple things to report. <coughs> uh, the Municipal Electric Utilities Association meeting is September 14th through the 17th. Now, I'm going to ask if anybody in the board wants to go to it. Um, Mayor Rivers will be on vacation. Uh, I just really found out about it today. I mean, I talked to Phil, but so I'm going to ask anybody if they want to go on the board. And if they don't, what I'll do is I'll make a motion to allow someone to go. And then I'll be able to check my schedule and see it's from September 14th through the 17th. We don't have to decide tonight on it, but by um, August 15th or 20th, we have to respond to this. So I guess I'll make that motion uh, to allow someone to go from the village of Rouses Point to the Municipal Electric Utilities Association. And it's, again, September 14th through the 17th. I'm actually interested in going, Brian. It's going to depend on whether or not I can get the time off. So. Right. So I'll second it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Motion and second. Any discussion? There will be no discussion. All those in favor, vote by the you sign a bye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, and I wanted to mention this last meeting, but I kind of overlooked it. I had, I had a lot on my plate. It looks like uh, I just want to acknowledge what a beautiful job the ladies and some of the men have done in the village with the flowers. Uh, they really look good in front of the village office. It's really nice. And uh, all around the village, the flowers look really good. So. Um, just want to just say thank you for a job well done. And I just want to bring up one other thing. I didn't talk about it last week, but before the 4th of July, we asked our code enforcement officer to go to some of the people in the village and do a couple things. Remove some abandoned cars, just a couple of things that come to my mind. And it wasn't accomplished. Now, when the code officer goes, he's acting under the authority of the village board. So when we ask people to do stuff in the village, there's a reason for it. So, you know, I don't like to say we're going to have to turn the heat up on some of these guys, but there's a few problems with some buildings in the village. We'd like to get them fixed up. So Mike's not a hard guy to get along with. He's in the village office every morning. So if somebody has a problem, they should come and talk to him. And I hope we can resolve a couple of the issues that we got going here. And that's all I have to report tonight. Thank you, Trustee Jefferson. Trustee Moore. I got one thing. Brian Channel and Eugene LeClaire has attended a laboratory course in Canton, has been awarded contact hours by New York Rural Water Association. And that's it for me. Congratulations to them. Thank you, Trustee Moore. Okay, go to Clark. Um, I have uh, the NICOM 49th Annual Fall Training School for City and Village Officials. It's going to be held, um, where is this little place, Ellenville at the Neville. It's going to be um, from, certainly a, bear with me, just for a minute. September 20th to the 24th. Um, this is the one that usually the clerk and treasurer attend. I'd like to request approval to attend this year and I believe Mr. Letourneau would also like to go. We'll be approved. 
the administrator and treasurer can you make on conference? I'll second that. Moved by trustee Huffman, seconded by trustee Jefferson. Any discussion? There being no discussion, all those in favor, vote by the use of sign by. Aye. 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 Those opposed, vote for carry. Um, I have one other item. I have a personnel item that I'd like to ask your consideration for an executive session to discuss office staff. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Panfield. Well, we'll call vote. Trustee Hopper, aye. Trustee Panfield. Aye. Trustee Jefferson. Aye. Trustee Moore. Aye. And the mayor votes aye. That's all I have, sir. Our son? Ryan? Okay, John? Doug? And Annie Cool? I'll give you a real quick update on the sewer project here. But, um, as you're well aware, we're pounding people on the schedule. Uh, preliminary comments have been received back from DEC. Uh, generally, very constructive uh, comments basically result of uh, involving the chemical to feed into the wastewater plant to, for phosphorus control. Um, in the Army Corps of Engineers, I talked to that gal three times since uh, we made our submissions about well, five or six weeks ago, and she told me today I pushed her for a commission, uh, <clears throat> committal date, but she wouldn't uh, offer one, but she did say that there was one permit that she was preparing and had of ours and that she had reviewed our submittal, everything was fine and as is, and she anticipated doing, doing uh, the village's letter of approval just as soon as she got the other permit done. Um, Aaron in our office has been dealing with EFC uh, as far as the sewer plan review. Um, they expect to have their comments with the um, The water project, the telemetry system, the, the contractor and instrumentation technician was up here last week on site, made some measurements and did a little adjustments. The electrician was back on site Friday. It still is, has a bug in it. The electrician rewired some things in the tank, including Sensor up at the top. Um, I discussed the results of all that work with them this afternoon. They um, are requesting another part out of California. It should be in here within a day or two. Um, hopefully, that will be the source of the problem. Um, I will take a couple of measurements at the meeting tonight. Them back through the factory. Uh, see if we can get that thing up and running. 36 inch pipe pressure test. They attempted it last week. Um, the testing foreman was a little concerned that it wasn't taking enough water fast enough, it wasn't building pressure. Um, we called the factory. The factory was unaware of all the history and the thing that suggested that he terminate the pressure test until. The guy at the factory had a chance to talk with me. Uh, I talked to him today. Um, the contractor is preparing to get back to work there. He's going to formulate up a little plan. Basically, uh, having trouble getting air out of that, uh, that section of pipeline. That's not unexpected from my end. I think it was kind of unexpected. We did get John a letter from DC that we haven't published for a public comment from mm -hmm. DC. We did. I believe that's what said Phil. Uh -huh. DC sent us a letter that we haven't published uh, in the paper for public comments on the project. Help call line. We did that quite some time ago. Last week. Oh. What we put in the paper recently was on the down on the water. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
trying to get that job done. Is that it, John? Yes. Thank you. Doug? Yes, uh, we did have a walkthrough with Brian Kelke last Wednesday to look at the punch list for the water project contract number two, the transmission line. And uh, things are pretty much complete. There are uh, just a few remaining items that uh, we kicked upstairs to John for him to comment on and a couple of things that we'll be chasing a lot for them to finish up. But that, that punch list is 95% done. Thank you, Doug. Mike? No, thank you. Open the meeting for comments from the public at this time. Anybody wishing to address the board may do so. No one wishing to address the board. Uh, I'll close the meeting at this time and ask for a motion for recess. Second. Trustee Jefferson, seconded by Trustee Tenfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll be in recess for about five minutes or less.